This topic is about Ohm's law. Ohm's law is a very important for law which basically tells us the relation between potential difference that is voltage and current. So we will begin with the law statement of the law itself. So here it is given that according to Ohm's law, the current, the current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference applied across its ends, provided the temperature and other physical conditions remain unchanged. So let's understand it in a better way. So let's have a part of a circuit. This is a wire which is a part of a circuit. Let's call this as end A and this is B. So we have selected a part of a, a circuit. So our conductor is AB and let's assume that I current is flowing through it. Then let us say the potential at A is VA and the potential at B is VB. Then the current that flows through the wire will directly depend upon how much potential difference is there between VA and VB. Like if the potential difference is high, then the current that is flowing will also be high. This will be high. And if the potential difference is low, then the current that will flow from A to B will also be low. And if there is no potential difference, that is if VA is equal to VB, then no current will flow. So this is what we understand from the law. Next, uh, let us see how... This relation gives rise to a constant which is very important in further knowing the properties of conductor. So, we will write the Ohm's law over here. So, according to Ohm's law, we can say both the things. We can say I is proportional to V and we can also say V is proportional to I. Both the things are both the ways we can represent the law that is because uh, the potential difference if we increase, the current increases proportionately and if we increase current, that means the potential difference is also increasing proportionately. So, we can use either of the two relations. So, here let us take the case when V is proportional to I. So, when V is proportional to I, if you remove the proportionality sign, you get a constant called R. R is called the resistance of that conductor. You remember we took the wire AB or the conductor. So, when uh, the potential difference is that of the two ends AB, the current is that which is flowing from A to B, then R which is nothing but the ratio of the potential difference to current is the resistance of this wire AB across which this relation has been established. So, R is called the resistance and it is straight away a, a ratio of the potential difference upon the current. Suppose this ratio is high. Suppose this ratio is high. That means the potential difference is high but there is a small current. So, that is why the resistance is high. So, this means that the resistance tells us uh, how much is the opposition offered. Right? It is a measure of the opposition offered to the flow of current. If more opposition is offered, R will be high. And if R will be high, I will be less. Less current will flow if the resistance is high and high current will flow if the resistance is low. So, having understood this, let's go back to our activity. So, we have just discussed the law and the definition of resistance is also uh, completed now. So, we will straight away start with the activity. So, this is the circuit we will be using to understand the law. Let us get familiar with the various parts that are the, there in this circuit. First is cell because without cell they, we won't have current right. So, a battery or a cell is the most important part because it is from here that the current will start flowing. Then we have a bulb because if you are studying a circuit and you need to know whether current is there or not or whether the current is high or low, we need to have something which will indicate it directly. So, here it is the bulb. Then we have a rheostat. A rheostat is a variable resistance. Uh, there is a sliding contact over here which you can see. So, actually the current will come and it will flow through uh, the upper part and then it will pass from these turns. So, when we change this position of this slider, we actually change the number of turns through which the current is passing and the resistance is directly proportional to length. So, if you make it pass through, suppose the slider is located at this end, then the current will pass through all these turns. So, L will be more, so resistance will be more. So, this is, uh, rheostat is a device by which we can change the 
resistance, right? And then we have the ammeter, as you can see, it is going to measure the current and we have a key which will switch on or off the circuit. So, we can click and we can uh, see the definition or the uh, in information regarding that device as well, like rheostat, it's a device used to control the current by varying the resistance. Like that, we can click and we can see the definition or explanation of that part. Like if you click on the emitter, we'll get to know what is an emitter. So, emitter is a device used for measuring the, the a current in a circuit. It's a device which measures current in a circuit. And unit of uh, current is amperes and uh, it is denoted by the letter capital A. So, once we are familiar now, we will now straight away start with the activity. So, this is the activity number one. Here, we are supposed to drag the correct labels to their appropriate places like this label. So, we have to identify. So, let's say it's the bulb. So, yes, bulb is the correct answer. So, next we are asked to identify another component of the circuit. So, this one is the rheostat. So, this is rheostat. Like this, we can drag the labels to their correct places and we can check whether we are able to identify the various co electrical components used in the circuit correctly or not. Once we are done with that, we come to the activity. So, this is the activity. As you can see, the current is flowing from positive to negative. Right? These particles represent positive charge, hypothetical, because we know the current is due to the flow of electrons. Right? So, these are the uh, positive charges which are flowing as you can see the direction. Right? And after passing through the emitter, they are entering the rheostat. So, let us now move the rheostat and set the value of resistance at one particular value. So, we let us say we have set it to uh, yeah, we have set it to 5 ohm. Okay. So, now there is a question. Uh, which of the following statement is true? Current decreases with increase in resistance or current increases with increase in resistance. So, we saw just now that resistance is the offer, uh, resistance offered to the flow of current. So, clearly if the resistance is uh, increased, right? So, current has to decrease. So, this should be the correct answer. So, now we are going to start with the activity. So, we will, we have already set the resistance or by uh, using the rheostat and it is set at 5 ohm. Now, we will click on the battery. So, now suppose we have two cells. So, our EMF or the battery voltage is now 1.5 plus 1.5. That is 1.5 volt of this and 1.5 volt of this. So, together they are giving us 3 volt battery voltage. Now, here is a question. Which one of the following is true? So, current decreases with increase in voltage or increases with increase in voltage. So, let us do one thing. We, we can now increase the battery voltage. Let us increase the battery voltage and let us see what is happening to the current. So, prior to that, please note this is the current that is shown. So, next what we will do? We will increase the battery and we saw that the current increases, right? If the pointer has moved ahead, that means the current has increased. So, what should be the correct answer? So, current increases, sorry, this should be the correct answer. Current increases with an increase in voltage, right? Next, uh, we have used three cells. Our resistance is 5 ohm and uh, the current is shown by the emitter. So, now, uh, this is what we can see in the circuit. So, now let us have a look at the calculation. So, here the current that is shown by the ammeter has been shown by calculation. That is current is voltage by resistance. So, voltage is this total 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5 these cells together. So, that is 4.5 they are giving and uh, the resistance is set at 5 ohm. So, current we are getting is 0 0.9 ampere. So, this is reading 0 0.9 amperes. Next what we do, we can alter and uh, next let us decrease the battery voltage okay and observe. So, we decrease the battery voltage and now you can look at the calculation and see that the current has reduced because now the voltage is only 1.5 plus 1.5 that is 3 and resistance is still 5. But what will happen if we change the resistance? Can you see the current decreases as the uh, resistance increases? So, this is the maximum resistance. You can see the current has slowed down. The particles are moving slowly. That means current has reduced. And 
we can check in the calculation also that the current is just 0.3 amperes that is because the resistance is high that is here in this case it's maximum up to 10 volt we have shown next uh, we are all the more uh, clear with the idea only we have to see now the graphical uh, representation of this right so let's have a look at the graph so this is the graph okay so we can have three graphs line graph between voltage and current so let's observe how on yeah we are, what is happening we are decreasing the resistance right so we can check that the graph this line this line is more and more inclined to the x axis right now again observe we are increasing the resistance let's increase the resistance so it's going towards y axis that the slope is increasing so we can say that the resistance uh, is high so the graph is more inclined towards the y axis and we can have a look at the bar graph one which is between voltage and current so now if you change the resistance you can see that voltage is same because voltage is provided by the battery unless you change this voltage is not going to change so this is fixed but this one current is changing as per resistance so you can note now that how the resistance is changing the current next we have paragraph 2 now this is resistance and current right so if the resistance is constant and let's say we add one cell so you saw current increases right so if r is fixed voltage and current will go hand in hand so all these things we have understood from here so we'll now see the data in the observation which we have already taken and we will now analyze the observation so here you can see the observation table wherein voltage current and resistance all are there in a in the form of columns right so let's begin uh, we have the resistance as 10 let it remain 10 and what we do we reduce the battery voltage and we bring it to 3 volts right so voltage is 3 resistance is 10 and we'll click on the store data button so we have got the value of resistance we have got the value of voltage and we have the value of current so this is 0 0.3 now we can verify very any of the parameter right let's say we go for one more cell so let's see what happens so r is not changing okay now we have just increased the voltage that's it and nothing else and now when we click on the state da store data what do we observe that the resistance is still 10 though the battery voltage has increased from 3 to 4.5 the current has increased but the resistance is same and that is what is ohm's law that this ratio of v and i is constant as long as the conductor across which we are studying ohm's law is the same if you don't change the resistance voltage and current will increase or decrease proportionality r will not change but what will happen if you change r so let's do that and see so this r let us say we decrease it and we adjust it to 5 right now we are not changing the battery voltage only we have changed the resistance now let's click on the store data button so what do we see so battery voltage was uh, 4.5 and now the resistance is 5 so current has adjusted itself in such a way that this voltage by this current is 5 because resistance we can change uh, if we change the resistance the v by i values may change but the ratio that is on dividing what you get is not going to change because we have fixed the resistance right now if we have fixed r at 5 ohm whatever may be the value of voltage let's say we reduce it to only one cell right so only one cell is there resistance is still 5 ohm now voltage has been reduced so what should be the current let's store data see it's still 5 resistance is 5 because we didn't change the material or the conductor or so resistance is same we just reduce the voltage that reduced the current so when we divided v by i we got still 5 because we did not adjust it at any other value so it was kept constant so if it is kept constant i and v that is v by i their ratio will remain constant and that will be equal to the resistance of this conductor across which we are studying the relationship between voltage and current.